Hey, sports fans, welcome back to another episode of Open. And today our guest is a good friend of mine, Emmanuel Babari. He's the Yankee beat reporter for WFUV 90.7 FM. And he's got some new news, too. He is now the new sports manager for the program. Eman, thanks for coming on the show and congratulations. Thanks, Bobby. Appreciate the words. And uh, thanks for having me. Always fun to do this. Ah, very exciting. I think it's big news. I know that you got some... Uh, Really good kudos and congrats on Twitter from some big names, including Michael Kay and Chris Carino. And Michael Kay, of course, was a former sports manager for WFUV. Yeah, very nice of them, of course, to reach out. It all becomes kind of like a big family. They were all in the shoes, walking the halls of FUV at one point and understand what a special place it is. So really nice of them to take some time to give the congratulations. And it was awesome for someone like me to hear from them, of course. Yeah, of course. And FUV, like Bronx, then I think is a special place because it also combines a lot of professional working people with college students and interns. And FUV, of course, now a 50,000 watt radio station here in the Bronx, housed at Fordham University. So even though you look 30 years old, especially with this uh, beard that you got going on a little <laughs> bit, and you happen to be almost seven feet tall, just kidding. Um, you, you are just a junior, going to be a senior after uh, this, this summer heading into the fall at Fordham. So right now, we wanted to have you on the show to not just talk about the sports landscape and a little bit about the Yankees, but also what this process has been for a college student having your spring semester cut short. And I think a lot of people have probably heard you on the radio as the leading voice for Fordham football and Fordham men's basketball. So what is it like to, to have those uh, winter and spring seasons also cut short too, Amen. Unlike anything we've seen, Bobby, and we talk so much about the impact it's had on athletes, some seniors unable to play in an NCAA tournament for the first time or maybe the last time, and then some spring athletes not getting to play their season at all, and some of them in between losing a year of eligibility. From our vantage point, we were getting ready to do that second round Fordham men's basketball game in the tournament at Barclay Center. They were set to play Duquesne. And then everything just kind of shut down right at that point moving forward. NBA got suspended. And then they were looking to play that second day of tournament games nationwide. And that was not to be. So from our perspective, it took away a spring season. And, of course, sports seems so secondary right now. And you think of people just staying healthy and staying safe. But from a student's perspective, a lot of seniors just not able to finish their college careers the way they would have hoped. Yeah, that includes actually a young man that you're replacing as the sports manager, Charlie Maizano, who's done such a great job, and he's a senior, and he happens to also be in the same class that I teach. I don't know if the fans at home are aware, but I'm the sports director, of course, for BronxNet and also at WFUV, so a little bit of a, of a special treat for me today because you get to pub both places. But I'm just excited about having you on, E-Man, because, again, I think the collaborations that BronxNet and WFUV have been able to do lately are really impressive. I mean, the news director, George Bodarki, and some of the news students, including Nat Migliori, have been able to come on and update communities about what's going on. And Bronxnet has really been very active in trying to keep the borough abreast of what's going on during this COVID-19 pandemic. It's always great to see the work that the news department puts out on a daily basis, award-winning department, and they have such a great collaboration with Bronxnet. And then what we were able to do last year with the Ram with Coach Gately highlighting a hidden gem on the campus of Rose Hill in the Fordham women's basketball team. And that instantly won awards two years in a row. So really exciting to see that level of collaboration, bringing a video element to the kind of behind the scenes radio work that's done at FUV, a listener supported station. So it's really exciting to see all the time and especially a platform like this during this time when you wouldn't necessarily get the same content you normally would. I think it highlights the excellent work that's being done. You are the reigning Marty Glickman Award winner, which is best play-by-play, -play, sharing that award with your friend Dominic Capone at WFUV. And uh, if you can, just give us a little bit of an update on what this process has been from an announcer perspective. I know you mentioned about the athletics, but you also were set to call that playoff game, so I know it's been a tough time for you. Certainly, and you look around the nation with the various announcers who are getting set for seasons or in the middle of a season, whether it's at the NCA, college, or pro level, it's nationwide. So it's almost like 
you're suddenly halted and not doing the games, but you also recognize that this is a nationwide, worldwide pandemic where everyone doesn't have the ability to do games. So I think that's been the unique aspect of it, something we really haven't seen throughout our lifetimes. And moving forward, you look forward to the fall, hopefully, where you could reboot and potentially start doing some games again. Major League Baseball, college baseball, trying to figure out some things over the summer as well. But really, it depends on the curve and the flattening of the curve, per se, of this pandemic to make sure everything's good to go and nothing kind of resurfaces when sports come about once again. So everyone's certainly eager for the sports to come back. We're eager to call games. But at the same time, it has to be all hands on deck and everyone ready to go by the time that happens. It'll be interesting to see if baseball can come back. Do you see baseball coming back soon? I'm not sure about soon. I certainly hope it's back this season. At a certain point, you wonder, okay, if it drags on into the summer, the later summer months, whether they decide is it worth it to have a season at all because you don't want it to be too abbreviated where it's almost a not legitimate season. And with this entire pandemic, it's been a ripple effect. So when we first heard the news of it, okay, a couple of games were postponed. And then that led to a couple more games. Then everyone realized, okay, if we're not going to have conference champions, how can we not have a NCAA tournament? So there were a lot of decisions to be made like that. With MLB playing in Arizona, it's very logistical. How do you get the players there? And then how do you make sure they're safe at all times while they're in that confinement? And then, again, no fans, but you got to get broadcast crews over there. You have to make sure that all those regional networks are taken care of. So if they're able to account for all of those avenues, would be great to see. And I think everyone would have their eyes locked on baseball, whether there are fans there or not. I think people just want to see sports in play right now. So maybe not soon, soon, but I could certainly see if everyone does their part in the social distancing in a couple months that we have baseball. When we talk about this now at this point, what, what do you miss the most about baseball? I just miss the action. I think when you look at it from just a pure standpoint, you see people tweeting, I just miss the 6-4-3 double play. I just miss the routine pop out to shortstop. Like there are so many pure things about these sports that you just miss when you're not watching them every day. And again, you don't appreciate things sometimes until you no longer have them. The Yankees on paper coming in, I think with the Dodgers were the top two teams that were expected to potentially meet in the World Series. Give me a forecast for the Yankees this year, and then also what impact do you think this pandemic could affect on the Bronx Bombers? If you look at the Yankees, they were a well-rounded machine entering the year. Now, you did have some setbacks in spring training. Luis Severino out for the year, regardless of whether there's a season with the Tommy John surgery. Aaron Judge, someone who could be benefiting from the break. He had the injury to his ribs. We had all that stuff revealed from last September that we didn't necessarily know about. Could he be back? Could Giancarlo Stanton be ready to go when the season starts? But aside from those hiccups, there were a lot of things to like about this Yankee team entering the season, including some of the more marginal role players like a Jordan Montgomery earning a fifth starter role. He was cooking in spring training. A Jay Happ was ready to go. Garrett Cole was ready to go. And if it's a shortened season, there's more room for error. If you slip up for 10 or 15 games, you can't have it covered by September. No, you have to get out of the gates hot and blazing and then kind of cruise to the finish line and then get to the postseason. So there's a lot of unknown with this Yankee team now, even though the talent is certainly there on paper. I'd still put them as a World Series favorite if it's an 100-game season as opposed to 162. Very much looking forward to the day where we can all you know, turn on the TV – have a nice meal with the family and watch a baseball game. If everyone's safe enough to play sports and we're safe enough to watch them, I think that's a great indication that we're on the better part of this. And that's the goal because so many families, so many lives are being affected right now. Hey man, thanks for taking some time out. I'm sending my best to you and your family. Hope everybody's well at home. Congratulations on being named the new sports manager at WFUV. And I hope to see you at that Yankee press box sometime soon. Bobby, thanks so much for having me. Appreciate it. And always great to talk. Thanks, E-Man. And we'll be back with more open after this.